Hey guys, this is here. We're back. Sorry about the very, very excited and brief outro there. But we're back with more Banner Saga. We just defeated the uh, Stone Singer, and it looks like out of the Black Sea, Sheer Terror, the Bellower. Everyone went very odd there. Back off, shouts Cypher. Can't shout and keep up the accent. It's hard. Avond and the other Varl step back, almost against their will. You can't pull yourself away from watching what happens next. Does everyone die? Ivor is gonna die. What is this? What is this? Rook should have been there with him. I mean, you can still run away. Let's take a look at the thing. Quake and Despair stuns one target for a turn and pushes all other enemies back three spaces. Sunder seems practically unkillable. It's got an exertion of two, which means it can reach this far. So we can reach here and here, which means if we can get, so we can reach through us halfway. So if we get back, back to here, it can't touch us the first turn. If we're fighting it, we're fighting it on our grounds, on our terms. Ivor, what in the world are you doing? Knock Jason and me up to for three armor damage plus one. It's not nearly gonna be enough. Okay, yeah, knock him back. Get out of here. What? Wait. Hold on. Why why did that knock it down only three? I was lied to about this. Oh. What? It heals? His arm's off. He's dead. Ivor rither Rithers in agony, his arm torn clean off by Bellor's onslaught. Sunder raises his weapon for the killing blow. Sunder, face me, screams an uncertain Avon, stepping back onto the bridge, raising his staff high. Even from here you can see his arm trembling. You feel practically frozen in place watching. No, Rook. Well, Rook would. Rook really would have died there. What? We have a giant worm of our own? Avon recoils in terror from the massive serpent that has appeared in the distance, and even Bellower backs away. It leans in close to inspect the two armies, flicks its great tongue, and then indifferently lurches over the mountainside, out of sight. The dredge are a knot of confusion. Some cower, others crouch in what looks like worship. Akan shouts orders above the din. Varl rush forward, bowling over surprised dredge, gaining ground. Velor is receded back into the horde. Yorinder watches from atop the stairs. Yorinder, isn't that the name of the forest in... Maiden's quest that we've been playing? Hmm. Hurry! says Avon, suddenly pulling at your arm, snapping you out of the moment. You rush to Ivor, laying on the ground amidst the fighting, still breathing despite a missing arm, and drag him back into the city. So Ivor's alive. He can't fight no more. 
two hundred years he'd been around and still. Day 100, everybody. That was day 100 in one. Let's talk to Avond. Okay, let's hear. Can you save ellipses? Yes, probably. Give me silence. Nearly three hours pass silently as Avon plies his trade, and Rook stands there, slightly hunched over, with a bow strung across his back. Flesh slowly forms and closes over Ivor's, Ivor's torn frame. This is as much as I can do. He should make it. Thank you. The mender looks exhausted, leaning heavily against the bed. When was the last time you slept? A couple days ago. I'm okay. Just need to sit. Before you can catch him, the mender crumbles to the floor. Well, chapter five. Weary, the weight of the sun. I feel like that's a poem. Oh. Exameek. Said that giant worm. Your sight swims as if underwater. Memories fly away like startled ravens before you can recapture them. With great effort, you remember who you are. Juno. You also realize that a monumental serpent is speaking to you now. Your last certainty was that you died some time ago, and that it is about to happen again. Oh. Well, Mr. Giant Serpent, I don't appreciate that. Wait, her dead body was back there. Frustrating. Gonna give that voice the serpent. You are slow to understand the serpent. It speaks in a language that recalls very ancient memories of words you learned long ago. If you are not going to die, I suppose we must speak instead. Who are you? I don't know. True, perhaps. But whether you are simple or clever remains to be seen. A different question, then. What are you? What is your purpose? First, tell me what you are. Do you ask the hammer what the blacksmith is making? This conversation becomes more meaningless by the word. What do your prophecies say? The gods gave you prophecy. Fate, destiny. Is there no child coming to slay me with a magic sword? Are there no stars in the sky foretelling this disaster? Do you truly not know? I don't believe the gods are dead. They might be, but I don't know. Not that one. I have no idea what you're talking about. Maybe. I will know if you tell me. I will know if you tell me. Must the prophecy speak itself then? So be it. Have you guys noticed that this, this looks like the snow looks like it's in the background, but it's also like through and before the serpent? I don't know. Listen carefully now, for I will give you a prophecy. I am the end. Do you understand? This world and 
this tapestry I would devour. It is my purpose. But I cannot. Instead, now comes a wall of night to consume your pitiful world. Wall of night? The dredge? Dredge? Stone men marching across a long bridge? No. It is dark. The egg white that has turned black. I am meant to devour the tapestry itself, not idly witness the dusk smother this rock. I am incomplete, a worm crawling through a dung field. Because of you, who are you to take? my destiny. What are you? Return what is mine. So is she one of the gods? But dead? No. I ain't gonna die. Haven. J Juno. You're, you're alive. You're alive! How? Where are you? Wait, where am I? Asleep, I presume. Or unconscious. I am in Richhorn, I think. A serpent was trying to kill me. Now I'm talking to you. Time is moving strangely. I've lost swaths of memories. But I found you. For a short time, at least. The serpent said something about a long bridge, so I took a guess. It came after you. We saw it at Einartov. Are you okay? It tried to turn me to ash after we spoke. I'd be surprised if that's the last we've seen of it. It could tear the land apart, or crush cities if it wanted. What do we do? It gets worse. A prophecy of the gods I've never heard of. There are still prophecies out there? It was vague. It sounded like that serpent was supposed to swallow the world. Instead, some kind of darkness or nothingness is seeping from the north. It devours whatever it touches. That would explain why the dredge are swarming on us like someone kicked an anthill. Avon, are you in danger? You could say so. Bellower is here. The Varl are holding him off, but not for much longer. I think, with all the Sunder, why the immortal one? Bellower, that is the worst of luck. I would have you come to me, but... We will have to do this the hard way. Listen closely. I will return to Strand and find a passage down the Red River. You must leave Einertoft and meet me in Sigurholm. Juno, we'll never make it to Sigurholm. Bellower is about to overtake us. The Varl won't listen to a thing I... Find a way. Do whatever it takes. I will not be able to contact you again before Seagull. Go. And Haven. Yes? I love you. Ah! Uh, dun dun dun! The plot thickens. Various other noises I could make that just don't quite make it up to the middle. You've spent a lot of time next to him since he passed out. Just keeping an eye on him. It's not like that, Dad. He saved Ivor. He might save the rest of us. Can he hear us? He just moved. How long was I? You were out for a couple of days. How do you feel? Juno, she's alive. I need to meet her at Seagullholm. Hold on, hold on. Slow down. Who's Juno? 
She's my mentor on the Mender Council. She contacted me. Contacted how? She's not like most Menders. What happened here since I passed out? The Varl are holding the dredge back, just barely. Belor has disappeared. Ivor is still out of it. Yorinder sent Hakan, Luden, and a couple hundred Varl away to Arboring. I don't know how long we'll be able to hold out here. Rook, I need your help. Take me to Seagerholm. Juno is going to meet us there. Seagerholm? That's got to be a week away, at least, and just abandoned Einertoft? Maybe you're... No, I could destroy that godforsaken bridge myself. That would delay the immediate threat, but Yorinder will never agree to it. I need to understand a few things, Avon. Uh... What is going on around here? That serpent, Bellor? Look, I know things are... It, it's a long story. How well do you know history? I like to think of pretty well, but not of this world. We're from a very small town in the woods. Oh, okay. Good job, Olette. I'll keep it short. You know how men in Varl were made, the Loom Mother, the other gods. Uh, in the First Great War, the armies of men in Varl hated each other. They fought bitterly for land and dominance. Then one of the gods created the Dredge. They were such a threat that unless men in Varl set aside their differences, they, th they threatened to wipe out both races. So they did. They ended the war, pushed the Dredge into the North, and formed an alliance that has held ever since. The Second Great War began a generation later. Dredge rallied their forces, defeated the Varl, who watched the borders, and laid waste to unsuspecting settlements throughout the world. I am so happy that they tell us this stuff, because I have been saying this entire time, we're, what, episode 25 or something? Finally, we get an explanation. They were led by Sunder, powerful Dredge warlords and weavers, like Bellower. He was there in the Second Great War. Humanity was on the brink of extinction when the inner circle of Menders went forth, and finally sent the Sunder and the Dredge deep underground. For the most part, the Dredge haven't tried to return since. Well, till now. Those Menders were called Valka. Juno wasn't there herself, but she's from their bloodline. So another great war has begun. If I didn't think the world was ending, it would be incredible. Ancient history is playing out before us. What about the serpent? That's another story. I There's nothing in the Mender's libraries about that thing. It must have been something to do with the dredge return. I'm telling you, it's that it's the Midgard serpent. It's going to eat the world because no one sailed off to the other continent. That seems likely. See what the let said. Eh, it doesn't matter. Or maybe it does. Why won't the Varl King destroy the bridge? We'll find it out in the next episode. I've been Erskig. Y'all have been fantastic, and. Uh, can I really leave you hanging like that? Yeah, I can. Bye!